All right, and hello and welcome, everyone. I'm glad, so glad to have you here. Um, this is amazing episode number three of the TubeCast. Uh, today we're going to be we're going to be discussing the controversial gun PSA. I don't know if any of you any of you have seen this one yet. Uh, it's just a breaking story um, about less than a week ago. Um, we're also going to be discussing uh, Spider-Man in um, the Marvel movies. Uh, he's going to be in the. Mar- well, we'll talk about that, actually. Um, and we're also going to be discussing uh, an interesting way to uh, take care of your your pet's uh, your hairdo, your pet's hairdo. Um, all on this, the third episode of the Thirteen Originals Tubecast. So, uh, stay tuned. Uh, it rolled the, the thing there. All right, and this next story, Gun Control PSA urges kids to steal parents' guns and give them to teachers. Yeah, that's right. Uh, The story is from, uh, looks like, oh, from theweek.com, and it was posted the December 24th of uh of of this year uh, so this is a brand new story just just getting on it um <clears throat> actually excuse me that wasn't the 24th i misread that that is the 23rd it is december 23rd is when this was posted so gun control psa anyway a new gun control psa produced by sleeper 13 productions uh no no affiliation no no affiliation with 13 originals uh we are not we we are we are pro we're pro gun we don't we're not anti-gun at at this uh channel i i know a lot of you are disappointed uh, some of you may be crying right now um uh, it's just no no guns aren't bad guns aren't the problem people people are the problem people are the problem Anyway, mm -hmm. that being said, uh, Sleeper 13 Productions has a rather unsettling suggestion for how kids can help end gun violence. Steal your parents' guns and take them to school. Yeah, that's right. Then give them to your understandably terrified teacher and say, Can you take this away? I don't feel safe with guns in my house. Now, this sounds like a joke. But uh, I have the video here, and um, I'm gonna play it for you. This is uh, this is the video I'm I'm talking about. Uh, go ahead, uh, put put. There it on.
Can you take this away? I don't feel safe with the gun in my house. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of uh, kind of messed up. I can name at least uh, maybe a couple crimes going on right there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's theft of a firearm, and then the 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 bringing a gun to school. Bringing gun to school that's against the law um, in many states, uh, if not all of them at this point. Yeah. And uh, oh yeah, if the teacher takes that gun from him, that's possession of an. Of a of a of a, of a, of a legal thing. of a stolen firearm that's possession uh. of a stolen property. So that's like four crimes right there. Yeah, just because the kid doesn't feel safe with a gun in his house. That's that's messed up. All right, <clears throat> the story goes on to say, even assuming the gun handed off was as smoothly and safely as the video depicts, which critics have noted seems unlikely. Yeah. In real life, the boy would at least face suspension, if not expulsion, or worse, for breaking multiple laws. Earlier this year, for example, a five-year-old was suspended for turning in the toy gun he had accidentally brought to school. That's right, a toy gun. For tur Think about that, people. A little kid, little boy, has a toy gun. He doesn't feel safe with his toy gun, so he turns into his teacher. This is a whole other story altogether. I'm not even going to get into how messed up uh, that that is. Yeah. Um, anyway, he accidentally barked. Another little boy was suspended for just pointing his finger like a gun. Oh, my God. And still yet another little boy was suspended for eating his Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun. A lot of you will remember that. That made big national headlines. Uh, that was like a few months back in 2014. Uh, it's probably 2015 by the time you hear this. Yeah. Mm, you should check your subscription box. Check it! <clears throat> check the box! <laughs> check the box! <clears throat> check the box! Check the subscription box! Excuse me, folks. A cold. I got a cold here. <clears throat> check the subscriptions. <clears throat> All right. Um, anyway... Yeah, so the creator of the PSA stands by her work, tweeting, A lot of people are afraid to share my PSA. If you're not a coward, please share. That's, that's what uh, Bonnie Chris, Christian, Christian said, Kristen said um, about her PSA. Uh, it, Bonnie? <sighs> no, it's not the... It's not that Bonnie. Get. No. Not that Bonnie. A different Bonnie. A liberal Bonnie. No, we don't know if she was liberal or not in the show. Just. Okay. Anyway. Th that's what this woman said. And it brings up a. Brings up an important. Uh, why would you. Catwoman? I'm, I'm, I'm almost speechless at this one. Yeah, that the whole thing doesn't make any sense to me. I suppose the whole point is that, that kids don't want guns in their houses, is what they're trying to say, because it makes them feel unsafe, but... Well, who's putting that idea in their head? Yeah, exactly. And how are these kids getting a hold of these guns? Now, the law clearly states, if you, a lot of you who, who aren't firearms uh, people, not that I'm some crazy gun nut, but... Uh, <laughs> Anyway, a lot of you who aren't, aren't familiar with the rules regarding firearms, you have to have your gun locked up, and you have to have your ammo locked up separately from your gun, especially if you have children. It's for that very reason, so that they can't get the gun. So why don't these people have their guns locked up? It seems to me that a more valuable PSA would be uh, lock your guns up so your kids don't steal them and give them to your teacher. Yeah. Because of all the liberal crap that's been put into their head throughout the years of public schooling, and I'm sorry, that's what it is. There's nothing in that behavior that is not put there by the liberal school system. That woman, it's same thing. I know it's a video. I know it's a PSA. The kid, dude, it's not really a real kid. It's the PSA from Bonnie, from Bonnie. But no, no, no. 
I know that. It's a PSA from Bar- but that shit excuse me. <clears throat> that 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 happens. That stuff happens. It does. It does. It just does. I mean, what what kind of world are we where we're now we're not even No, what I'm trying to say I just I find it disturbing that somebody would think that it's the right thing to do to suggest that if you're a kid watching this PSA cuz that's what that's who this is really aimed towards. Who who do you, who the hell do you think it's aimed towards? It's not aimed towards the parents. They're not going to take their own guns and bring them into school and give them to their child's teacher. <laughs> I don't feel safe with this in my house. You better take it. You're the teacher. <laughs> exactly. Um, so this is actually encouraging children to go and, you know, go into your parents' dresser or their gun safe or, oh, wait, no, they don't have a gun safe because if they did, you wouldn't be able to get their guns. Exactly. But anyway... <laughs> This is encouraging children to take their parents' firearms and bring them into school and give them to their teacher, which is just a terrible idea on so many levels. Um, A a better PSA, a PSA I would rather see, would be maybe a PSA where the kid sees his parents' gun, like, not locked up, and then goes out and, and gets his piggy bank and goes down to, like, Staples or you know, Walmart or, or Harbor Freight or somewhere where you can get a cheap little safe and goes and buys like a cheap little $35 safe and brings it and puts their parents' gun in it and then gives their parents the key. That yeah. I would rather see. I'd rather see that. Exactly. Because at least that's promoting gun safety. This is promoting gun idiocy. Mm-hmm. That's all it is, is gun idiocy. Yeah. Suggesting that nobody should have guns. Really? Because they're not safe to have. I, I I don't know about you guys, but with all the rioting and all the BS that's going out on the streets, I I feel safer uh, having a gun. Right. I feel safer having a gun in my house. Exactly. Than not having a gun. So, uh, I don't know. Go figure, right? I don't know what's going on with people these days. It's just uh, it's crazy Leva. Well, tell us what you think down below about this video. I mean, I really want to know. What do you think? Do you think uh, you think I'm nuts because I think this is a bad idea? Do you think this is a good thing? you think kids should be taking their parents' guns and bringing them to school, even though it's against several different laws? Uh, let us know in the comments, you know, or make a video. Better yet, make a video. Send me an alert or something. Put, put, put a URL in the comments, and uh, we'll all talk about it. We'll get in on some co- conversation on this. Um, so let us know what you think. This is an interesting issue. Uh, next, next story. Yes. All right, and uh, here's a here's another story. This is a this is a real serious one, folks. Uh, this is from the International Business Times. Uh, Spider Man cameo in Captain America: Civil War, a done deal. Uh, most of you remember there was a Sony hack um, very recently. And uh, they got all this information. And apparently, there were plans to collaborate uh, with Sony for the third sequel. Um, this is the story. The recent hack into Sony Pictures servers revealed the studio's plans to collaborate with Marvel for a third sequel to The Amazing Spider-Man. Likewise, it also detailed the possibility of the superhero making an appearance in Captain America Civil War. Those plans may seem uncertain, but according to the latest report, studio execs are already planning on meeting and discussing the sequel. A source told Screen Gaz... Oh, oh, oh no, it's all one word. Excuse me. The, scre- the source told Screen Gonzo, which I guess is the division of the business, uh, the, the, the business times whatever, (laughs) that Sony Pictures co-chairman Amy Pascal, that's the woman who was saying that uh, President Barack Obama would love the butler. Um, Yeah, don't worry. She begged for forgiveness from Al Sharpton. And uh, you know what he said? He said, I'll consider it. That's right, folks. He'll consider it. And for those of you that don't understand what that means, I can translate what that means. That means 
that uh, the bank hasn't cleared the check yet. Yeah. So as soon as it clears whatever she's paid him or whatever she's promised to do for him, maybe his life story movie, yeah. I don't know, it, you know, he's waiting on that and then maybe she'll be forgiven. But that's another story for a different episode. <laughs> We're back to the Marvel news. We want to do the lighthearted stuff, not the political stuff right now. Um, well... Let's face it, everything's political, but then again, that's another topic for another episode. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway, the source told them that uh, Amy Pascal in Marvel Studios heard Kevin Feige <laughs> will meet in January to discuss the future of the amazing Spider-Man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or the MCU for everybody who has to uh, abbreviate everything so that you know people who aren't familiar with the subject don't know what you're talking about you know, right. see you do it in the comments all the time it's like not everybody you know, acronyms like, oh, we can't just type anyway <laughs> they said that the meeting reportedly took place at uh, Pinewood Studios where Avengers Age of Ultron and Captain America Civil War are being are believed to be uh, filmed uh, no further details were provided but sources said that the good news will be revealed sometime in February likewise Feige is said to be pleased with where his deal with Sony Pictures is heading. How the superhero will be featured uh, remains to be uncertain in the uh, Marvel Universe, but Spider-Man is to make an appearance at the end of the credits scene, according to Screen Gonzo. It would make a sense if the character will be featured in Captain American Civil War, since the film is scheduled for filming sometime in February or March, it coincidentally links to the mentioned release of the good news in February. So I guess that's pretty much a, a, a no-brainer. Um, still uncertain if The Amazing Spider-Man will really make an appearance in the Captain American Civil War. Sony and Marvel have yet to confirm the reports according to uh, Johnson, the source... Uh, <laughs> thank you, Johnson. The source... <laughs> The source is the same person who provided the confirmed dates for Vision's look in the Avengers Age of Ultron, a story I did not discuss on here or uh, even read myself yet. So uh, I'm in the dark on that one. But um, well, what, what, what do you think, Catwoman? You, uh, you, you end up uh, going to these. I usually get pretty excited about uh, the Marvel movies, the uh, yeah. Marvel Universe. They've been pretty good films. Definitely. Know, as films go. Yeah. Spider-Man seems to be working his way into everything now. It's kind of mm. weird. Well, we'll say the Sony, uh, the, the Spider-Man movies were, were pretty bad. The, the, yeah. No. I mean, I, I, the amazing Spider-Man movies, the reboot, it's, it's better in some ways than the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy, but... Not in very many, yeah. and the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy wasn't really the best. But yeah. let's face it; these are the these are the movies that we were waiting for for all our childhood yeah. when when we were were children that we never really got because special effects and interest wasn't there in the in the industry. Yeah. Um, it's it's nice that they're coming out now. I I wish they'd quit changing all the superheroes' backstories and all the important bits about their characters. Yeah. But, you know. Whatever. I wish they'd quit trying to make everything uh, overly political correct with yeah. these, too, you know. Uh, the Fantastic Four movie comes to mind where they ignore everything about the characters themselves that, yeah. that, that have been tried and true with the comics. And it wouldn't really bother me so much if they were consistent about it, you know, not to start up a whole argument about that. But uh, I'm just going to say this. Uh, Black Johnny Storm... Yeah, no. No. I mean, I'm okay with Black Johnny Storm if Sue Storm is also black, because that makes sense to me. But they're really not black in the comics ever. I mean, it's not really... I mean, I could see if you really wanted to have... You know, if you thought that they were the perfect actor for that. Oh, perfect. Per picture perfect. Well, you gotta... Look, the comic books, they're, they're biological brother and sister. You mm. know? Biologically, they're brother and sister, so they're going to be the same race. Yeah. 
you want to make them adopted, that's fine. But to make them adopted and different races is just too many changes to one backstory for these characters. It's like, why even bother having Johnny Storm? Why don't you just create a different character and have him in the movie instead and just say, oh, well, this is... uh." This is Joe Pancake, and yeah. uh, he's he's the he's the other fourth member of the Fantastic Four, and uh, you know he's he's not related. To him. He's a whole new character. Yeah. You know, you might as well just do that. You know, you want to create new characters, create a new movie, mm-hmm. stop messing with the old ones. Yeah. But I digress. Mm-hmm. The story at hand: Spider-Man cameo, Captain America: Civil War. I think it's a good thing. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think it's a good thing for both movies. Yeah. It's cross-promoting. That can only help. I mean, if the next Spider-Man movie sucks balls... Which is it could. <laughs> it'll get a boost from the Captain America movie. Yeah. If the Captain America movie sucks balls, people will go back and see it who hadn't seen it because they saw the Spider-Man movie, like the Spider-Man movie... Heard he was in the Captain America movie at the end of the credit. People are gonna they're gonna want to see that crossover. They're yeah. interested. Yeah. It makes sense to have Spider Man make a cameo. He's one of the classic Avengers. You have to mm. have to have him in there just for a little bit, even if he's just gonna swing in there and deliver a one liner at the end. Yeah. Gotta happen. Yeah. I look forward to it. I, I actually plan on on seeing the next Captain America movie. I still have to see Winter Soldier, but um you know, I, I I collect the Marvel movies, so I have to. I wait till they're on DVD, then I see them. That's how I do it. Yeah. I, I, I see you out there, the Blu ray elitists out there. They're snickering that I buy DVDs. They're like, oh, I'm leaving them watching that in the 1080p. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shut up. I like DVD. That's what I've been doing for the longest time. I don't hate Blu ray, but. Why am I going to jump on board just to jump on board with that, you know? Exactly. Uh, You're not going to get any better than what the film is shot on. Most of the stuff I have, if I are going to rebuy it on Blu-ray to get the quality, but it's only going to be the quality of the film. Most of the movies I have on DVD and what I watch, film traditional camera style, you know, no digital film. So it's only as good as that film quality is doesn't make any sense blu-ray elitists i see you out there stop that blu-ray we'll just make you know then the blu-ray players are cheap too and they're cheaper now and all the yeah the discs are still ten dollars on average more than a dvd of the same movie explain that those discs cost more to make i don't think so no no anyway i'm excited spider-man cameo Captain America movie. I want to see it. Hmm. Looking forward to it. Other Captain America movie. Gonna see it soon. Don't know when. Just waiting. Hmm. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it. That's it. Hmm. All right. And uh, this next story is uh, from the AP. It's uh, San Jinkto, California. San, San Jinkto? Jinkto? Saying Jinkto. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Something like that. You people in California are going nuts right now, but that's okay. Uh, I don't. I don't live in Kelly. I'm sorry. Just Kelly? Nice. No, not Kelly. Do. Ooh, Kelly. No. No. Nope. <laughs> uh, no. No. Coco, a red dish brown pit bull. Oh, I didn't read you the thing yet. Hold on. Anyway, this is from the AP. It takes place in San Jinto, California. Uh, I just like saying San Jinto. Uh, officials. Missing dog died to deceive. That's right. A story about a dog. Coco, a red dish brown pit bull with white markings, went missing from her Southern California home on Thanksgiving. Nearly a month later, she was found and reunited with her owners. But she was a different color. Yeah, Riverside County Animal Service officials made the match when they scanned a stray black dog for an implanted microchip and found she was listed as an eight-month-old reddish-brown pit bull. Yeah. And she was adopted in October from San Jinkto Shelter. The Press Enterprise reported 
Officials believe Coco was stolen and died in an act of deception to make it harder for her owners, Christopher Ingrassi and Heather Lowry, to find her, said Riverside County Field and Shelter Deputy Director Frank Corvino. Officials believed the dog escaped from the thief's property. The dye job is not very good, Corvino said in a statement. He used to be a hairdresser. He knows these things. Trust <laughs> trust Corvino with your hair. Corvino will make it perfect. Mm. See me, Corvino, for your appointment today. Oh, you look fabulous. It's Corvino. A little bit off the side and hit on the top. Oh, Corvino. Me do your tips. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> it's not a very good one, he said in a statement, but it would work if someone was looking for a reddish brown dog. Animal Services spokesman John Welsh said Coco shouldn't suffer any long term consequences from the dye. Well, you know, except for everybody snickering, <laughs> that's not his natural color. <laughs> <laughs> What a bad dye job. No. <laughs> and certainly Coravino's comments can't help the dog's self-esteem in the least. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't think someone would go as far as to dye a dog's fur to keep them, she told animal control officers. This is what Laurie said when she was shocked to learn what happened to her friend Coco. <gasps> oh, no. I, w I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> it totally is. What do you what do you what do you what do you think about this dog dying business? That's bizarre and weird. Like why would you You could go and like adopt a dog somewhere. Why would you go through the <laughs> go through all of that and die of dog that you found black? And if you know that somebody's looking for their animal then why wouldn't you just give it back to them? That's stupid. <laughs> Why would I mean? Is it like a special pit bull? Are the reddish brown ones rare or something? Uh, no, definitely not. That's what color a lot of them are. Okay, because like I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a dog expert. I'm or or, or really a dog fan, and I mean, it's not that I hate. To, I don't. That's I don't kick puppies. Come on. No. Nope. Oh jeez, that's that's me. No, I'm just I'm not a I'm a cat person. All right, whatever. Anyway, it's what it, is. <laughs> it is what it is. Well, pit bulls, I guess I guess they can be expensive, but this wasn't a puppy. I mean, the story didn't really say say the age, did, did it? I don't recall. I don't uh, think so. Rattling, uh, folks, uh, did you tell me out there? Did the pup did did it say the age? I don't Were you think listening? So. But the you... answer after this. No. Um, <laughs> You know what? There's plenty of pit bulls at shelters that are very not expensive, so. <laughs> and they're not just old, like. No. You know, they're not the throwaway dogs that nobody loves. Hey, hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, again with that? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't. Jeez, oh, don't show them that. It, I'm warning you about the graphics. You mean, come on, man. Oh, please, John. Sometimes it's funny, sometimes that's. Okay, whatever. Taking it too far. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> That's a little bizarre to go that far to... Well, it's eight months old, so it was still a puppy. So, I mean, I guess it did say the... See, I told you there'd be a quiz and the answers would be after this. You didn't believe me. <laughs> you were out there. You thought I was joking. No, yeah. It was... See, I told you you weren't listening there, Fred. Um, <laughs> Eight-month-old reddish-brown pit bull. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I didn't sound like I said pin, pimple. 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 <laughs> reddish brown pimples. If you've got an eighth month, an eight month old reddish brown pimple, I think you need to see a dermatologist because uh, that sounds like it's infected as hell. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely don't want to spray paint that black. <laughs> no. And geez, uh, I wouldn't want to be the person who has to clean the bathroom mirror when that one goes pop. <laughs> On that note. Uh, you make of that what you will, folks. That's uh, it's 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 dire dogs. I, I'm gonna. Nobody will ever know the difference. <laughs> nope, to totally be fooled. <laughs> all right, everyone, and unfortunately, that is all the time we have for today. The um, 
that's it, folks. This is this is the um, this is the end of episode three of the Tubecast. Um, thank you for joining us. I hope you all come back. Uh, <laughs> don't be a stranger now, y'all. Come back now. You hear? Uh, so uh, rate, comment, subscribe. Uh, you know, leave all the nasty, hateful things you want to say, and all the nice pleasantries you want to say. Try to keep it pleasant among each other. Uh, if not me, just among each other, please. And uh, subscribe, uh, like the videos, comment on them, share them, do whatever you like. Um, thank you. I'll see you here next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.